tools you'll need to troubleshoot the refrigeration module are a bullet piercing valve for accessing the refrigeration system as it's already sealed, a digital scale to weigh the refrigerant, a recovery unit to recover the unit's refrigerant, a tube cutter, a manifold style gauge set, a vacuum pump, a refrigerant itself, 134A in this case, a Schrader access valves, a torch for brazing, and leak detector. The first step is to tap into the system with the bullet piercing valve. Attach the bullet piercing valve to the quarter inch process tube coming off the compressor. The clamping screws, the three on the outside of the valve, need to be tightened first. Be sure the center screw, which is the needle that punches a hole in the tube, is backed out before you start. There are different inserts that come with the taps. All of our units have quarter inch process tubes, so to be sure to use the quarter inch tube insert in your clamp. Once you have it securely fastened to the tube, we'll be ready to connect our hose and actually screw the center screw in to punch a hole in the process tube. Connect low side hose from gauges, which is usually blue colored with the blue hose. Be sure gauges are turned off. They don't need to be on to read pressure of the hoses. Now we're on the center screw to pierce the tube and when you unscrew it you should see p pressure on the gauge go up if there's any gas in the system. If the pressure doesn't go up indicating no gas on the low side we'll need to install a bullet piercing valve on the high side to see if any gas is on that side which would indicate a restriction. Since there is gas in this system, we'll turn on the compressor and see if it's pumping. If the compressor is working properly, it will pull the pressure down to 20 to 40 psi, depending on the temperature of the system. If the pressure doesn't come down and even rises slowly, the compressor has a mechanical fault and needs to be replaced. If the pressure keeps going down and goes down below 10 psi, then the system is either low on charge or has a restriction, as shown in this case. Now we will pump the refrigerant out of the system and into our recovery tank so we can weigh it. This is our recovery pump. Take the inlet hose and connect it to the bolt piercing valve. You will need to shut the bolt piercing valve off and detach the gauge hose first. Now attach the outlet hose to the liquid side of the recovery tank. And open the recovery tank valve. The 
zero the scale once you're ready to start recovering the refrigerant. Now open the bullet piercing valve. And turn on your recovery unit. You will see the stale slowly start to increase. This could take 15 minutes or so. You can watch the low side gauge on the recovery pump. Once it gets below zero, you know it's recovered all the refrigerant. This unit holds 16 ounces and you can see we recovered it all. So we know the system isn't leaking on this unit. Now that we've recovered all the gas, we'll remove the bullet piercing valve, which is just temporary valve, and weld on permanent Schrader valves. There may be a little puff of gas when you open them to take them off. Now use the tube cutter to cut this section of tubing off. Tighten till your wheel touches the copper, then give it another half turn and rotate tube cutter around three or four times and tighten it another half turn. Keep doing this until you cut the tube off. Take your time, you don't want to break your blade. Now do the same to the high side process tube. Now we will install our Schrader valve connectors. Be sure to take the Schrader valve itself out of the core before brazing it on as there's rubber gaskets that can melt from the high heat. Now we'll braze them on. You can tell when it's ready to add filler rod by the color of the torch flame. It will turn from blue to green on copper tubes. Don't overheat the tubes by pulling torch back as they start to get red and keep your torch flame moving. Don't stay in one spot. You want to heat the area you want the filler material to flow to. It's a good idea to use a mirror to look at your welds all the way around to be sure you got it completely welded. let them cool down. You can use a wet rag to speed this up. Once they're cool you can put your Schrader valve inserts back in making sure that they're tight. These can leak if you don't get them and they're tight.
Now we'll connect our system to the vacuum pump to pump all the condensables out of the system. We'll connect the low side gauge to the process tube on the compressor. The high side hose to the process tube going to the condenser coil. And the center hose will connect to the vacuum pump itself. Make sure all of our connectors are tight. We'll turn on the vacuum pump. Now open both valves on our gauges so we can pull from both sides. You'll need to let the pump run half hour to an hour or longer if you can. You can see it's Hold down below zero on the gauges. After a half hour or so, we're ready to disconnect. First you shut off both gauges. Turn off your vacuum pump and disconnect the center hose. This is a low loss connector hose which means that the vacuum is still in the hose. Now put your refrigerant tank on the scale. Connect your center hose to the tank. Open your tank and zero your scale again. If your gauges, gauge hose don't have this low loss connector like this one does and looks like this you'll need to bleed the air out of the hose after connecting it to the refrigerant tank so you don't have any air in the system. So now that you've got it connected to the gauges and the tank turned on just loosen the center hose a little bit and bleed the gas out to get all the air out of it tighten it back up. We don't need the high side hose on so we can take that off. I just used that high side to help vacuum it out. Once it stops flowing freely into the compressor, we'll turn the compressor on to draw the remaining charge into the system.
will shut the gauges off when the scale reaches 16 ounces slightly before then now we have a full charge If you found that your unit was low on refrigerant when recovering it, you'll need to find the leak. Now that you have the system recharged, it's under pressure and you can check all the welded joints with your handheld leak checker. Look for signs of oil. This will help you to determine leak location. And once you find the leak, you need to recover all the refrigerant again and take the Schrader valves out and repair the leak. Then put the Schrader valves back in and vacuum it down and recharge it with refrigerant.